Okay, so um, yeah, review from last time. Um, so we have this this Nahi there and um, the vectors one S B one B two B three. And last time I sort of explained why we added uh, B1, B2, and B3, and uh, I tried to motivate how we would have known in advance that those were a good choice of vectors to get kind of what we wanted. So the main motivations were essentially to do with what physics we want. So we wanted to reduce the amount of supersymmetry because in 4D, um, um, if we did have one and S, we had N equals four supersymmetry. But if we added B1, B2, and B3, because they essentially split the uh, ramon nevis schwartz fermions, the, the Sanyo and the Kais, uh, we reduced the number of Gravatini. So we reduced the supersymmetry down to uh, N equals one, which is a nice amount of supersymmetry. We just have one supersymmetry to break. Um, and it's good for model building. So, I mean, this is what people were doing in the in the late 80s when first started using string theory. People were really trying to make models of particle physics. And um, the idea was really to try and get the, the spectrum of particles of the MSSM, which is the minimal supersymmetric standard model. So it's like the standard model particles and all of their super partners. Um, so that was the, the sort of original motivation, which is like a N equals one supersymmetry uh, model, because back then everyone thought we wanted to have supersymmetry, at least some supersymmetry, because that was before the LHC had, had been running for, for so long and realized that there was no super partners to be found in the, at least in the energy ranges that the LHC was looking in. So, um, so the B1, B2, and B3, one thing they did was split um, the supersymmetry to n equals n equals one. And then the other thing was to uh, give us an SO10 gut. So, um, so the SO10 gut was from associated to the um, sort of grouping of boundary conditions for the psi bar um, fermions. So with B1, B2, and B3, you sort of split off the boundary conditions for those five complex fermions, which generate an SO10 symmetry. Um, the full gauge group was, so that they were the sort of, well, so these are the really the two main points that I suggested for the choice of B1, B2, and B3. And then I also mentioned that obviously modular invariance rules constrain the number of fermions in, inside those vectors. So they have to follow the ABK rules. And once you kind of take into account all of that, those choices are, you know, up to a bit of um, permutations. They're pretty much, you know, unless you wanted to break the hidden group, which we don't really care about. We just had this hidden group of all of the site, the five bar one to eight. Um, but up to, up to maybe breaking of the hidden group, most of the other choices are, that you could take for B1, B2, and B3. Uh, wouldn't really give you any different physics that are kind of arbitrary. So you're, you're almost fixed with these choices at some, at some, to some extent. Um, and so, oh yeah, so one other thing about this SO10 was, was that we, what we found is the B1 and the B2 and the B3, they gave us 16s, spinorial 16s um, of the SO10. So these these um, these spinor sixteens are what all of the the sort of I said the standard model particles would fit into as a representation. So sixteens of SO ten um, are like the particle generations. So one generation of particles. Particle gems. Okay. So uh, like, you know, your up, down, um, electron, anti-electron, uh, sorry, electron, electron neutrino, um, and all of their sort of choices of, of um, charges 
fit into a 16. And it, it, these would include the left-handed and the right-handed uh, neutrinos, importantly. So I said about how the SO10 is uh, sort of still um, sort of seen as quite useful uh, gut because partly because it allows for the introduction of masses for the right-handed uh, neutrinos, which um, some experiments on neutrino oscillations um, suggest that there should be these particles, but in the conventional standard model, you don't have right-handed neutrinos. Okay, um, but if you if you can kind of count up all these the actual individual particle states of one generation of the standard model, there's 60, and that's the forms in in the SO10 gut language. That's the 16 spinorial representation. But actually, the B1, B2, B3, the B1, B2, and B3, they actually give, um, they each give 16 copies. So it's 16 times three um, generations. So once what, what you do the GSO projections, you still, each one has essentially a, still has a redundancy, if you like, or uh, mainly because of the, um, if you look at the states, you still have the internal fermions, the Ys and the Ws, or the Ys and the W bars. They, they're they inside each, they, they still have a choice of Ramon vacuums. So each uh, sort of 16 is actually 16 copies of six, uh, 16. So there's a lot of, um, there's still a lot of states there in each V1, V2, and V3. So I, di I didn't explicitly do the GSO projections for this, but that's what you find. So there's, there's 48 generations still. So, so obviously we're not done. This isn't like a completely phenomenological model or anything, but we're getting there. We've got the right representations. We've got a good amount of supersymmetry. And um, we, you know, we we still want to break this SO10 closer to the standard model, and we want to reduce the number of generations still. So, but we're we're get we're sort of getting towards something more physicsy. Okay. Um, oh, what's this? Hmm. Right, so um, anything else I said last time that I should review? I think that's it. That was about, about it. Any questions? Um, so those are the sort of main points from last time. Oh, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll just say as well, so the full gauge group, was uh, we had this SO6. Um, like three copies of FO6, which were from the internal fermions and the eaters. So we had like, um, so I'll write it sort of underneath. We still had grouped together in those basis vectors. We still had um, like Y bar three, four, five, six, and eta bar one. And then we had. Um, Y bar one two W bar five six E to bar two and then we had uh, W bar one two three four and E to bar three. So there's three because remember these are real fermions on their own. So there's three complex fermions here to give rise to an SO six. So on each um, on each of the three vectors you have an associated SO6. And then um, the SO10 from the side bar, as I said. And then um, we just have the hidden group. So the hidden and it's the phi bar one, two, right. 
So now we want to sort of think about like going beyond beyond the nine set to something even more realistic. I'll probably put this out now. Right, so beyond nine. So um, I'm not going to, I could spend a while talking about this first part of going beyond Nahi, but I'm going to just mention the kind of key things, be a bit schematic. So, um, so breaking, um, so if you wanted to get to the standard model, so we know the standard model is SU3 cross SU2 cross U1. So we want to basically break um, SO10 to some like maximal subgroup, some, some subgroup that's either but that, that, that contains the standard model, even closer to the standard model, but um, still contains it. Um, so what we what, what we want to do to um, so so there are sort of some standard choices that are motivated by physics. Um, that I'll just kind of tell you what they are. So um, some standard choices are, first of all, the Papi Salam. So Papi Salam models were studied already, I think, in like before string theory. They, they already had quite a bit of physics motivation just from the basic idea of, you know, we knew what the standard model gauge group was in you know, the 60s or whatever. And then the people in the 70s were looking at uh, just guts. So just the gut, just from group theory. And then um, Patti Salam were already one of the first ones that were studied uh, along with SU5. So SU5 I'll mention in a second, but SU5 was probably the first one that was studied. And then they found problems with it, but it's a long story. But so, so the Patti Salam gauge group is SO, um, Six cross SO4. Um, so if you want an SO6 and an SO4, so remember this is going to come from the SO10 part of the gauge group, which is the sidebars. So if you want to get if you want to get this gauge group, all you have to do is introduce a new vector. So um, so maybe I'll put that up here. So if we want to break SO10 intro. A new vector um, let's call it alpha the first, first uh, alpha so if if we take this alpha vector we want pat salam what we do is we make sure let's say that the boundary conditions in alpha of these fermions so the first three are uh, let's say one, um, but the, well, okay, let's write it like this. So the boundary conditions of sidebar one, two, three, four, five is one, 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 sorry, one, 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 and then zero, zero. So you give different boundary conditions to the first three sidebars. Um, than the, the latter two. So you could do it either way around. So both choices, either these these two one, these zero, or these one, these zero, would give rise to this breaking. Um, and then and then you'd really want to you'd have to obviously break that further down to the standard model still, but you're getting closer. One thing as well I could mention is it's just that if you did some group theory, you can prove that these groups, so SO6 is actually isomorphic to SU4, um, which you can try and prove if you want to remind yourself of some group theory. And SO4 is isomorphic to FU2 times SU2. Remember, I, yeah, you, you've got your complex groups um, are going to have, um, well, um, 
but yeah, this, this, this is yeah, just the kind of exercise and boot through. I, I think the I, I'm not sure how to show the SO6 and SU4 off the top of my head, but SO4 to, S, to SU2 is quite standard and a kind of logical result because this is this is a real group. You know, this is a, a group defined over the field of real numbers, orthogonal group. Whereas SU2 is defined over the complex numbers, so it's a smaller dimension. But it's defined over a bigger field, complex numbers. So it sort of makes sense that it's double the size. But um, okay, so that's the Patti Salam. Oh, sorry. Is that my, uh, SU4, where did I get SU4 from? Maybe that maybe the SU4 is wrong. It might be SU3 times U1, but maybe that's also isomorphic to SU4. I need to check that. Actually. Yeah, no, this is correct. Um, so this SU4 would be like um, of, of color. It'd be like the strong, um, strong force, but and then SU2 would be, um, it'd be like left and right. So the SU2 one would be like the one of the standard model, the other one would be like the right-handed, which you need to break if you wanted to get the standard model. So this would be like SU2 left, SU2 right. But yeah, yeah, play around with the quantum numbers a bit. But yeah, that doesn't really matter, I'm just um, um Okay. And then um, SU5. So yeah, so as I said, the first gut people try was the, the SU5. So it's like special unitary group of dimension five, which kind of naturally is like the most the easiest thing. You've got a SU3 and an SU2 in the standard model. So you can kind of try imagine just sort of sticking them like the SU3 part here and the SU2 part here, creating a five by five matrix, which is like, the fundamental generators of SU5. That's the kind of, was the most simple idea of fitting the two groups into one group, just block them like that. But then if you do that, well, the main problem is proton decay um, because um, we know that protons are very stable, they should last a very long time. But if you try to do an SU5 group, there's some uh, bosons that mediate decays of protons where the lifetime can't be made consistent with the observed lifetime. So the, the protons wouldn't last as long as as we need them to. So they um so but, but a, a gut that does uh, sort of solve the problem to some extent is if you have the SU5 um that you add on an extra U1. I can't remember all of the the history and the physics with this stuff, but just giving you some overview. But the flipped SU5, so this is called the flipped SU5. And, um, there's been a few people who have really tried hard to make this work for a long time. And uh, there's some people very committed to it. There's a guy in Annopolis um, who was, well, I don't know if he was a professor in uh, Texas and he's very famous in Greece, like a public figure in science. And for like 30 years, he's been advocating for flipped SU5 as like the, the sort of um, ultimate theory of, <laughs> I don't know, the gut theory. But um, so anyway, so how would you get this group if you were using the free fermionic? Well, so we want to give, so this is where I don't want to go on a big diversion here. You know, I've, I've mentioned many times that we've been using real boundary conditions for everything. We have been avoiding very carefully complex boundary conditions because it just makes things a bit more complicated in a way that's not that useful. But obviously the standard model can, contains unitary groups, which are defined over complex numbers. So you really do need ultimately to have some complex boundary conditions in order to get the unitary groups. So here you've got um, SU5. So what you'd want here is actually to give R. So if you give half boundary conditions to um, 
So each of these, you get the SU. Uh, you get a five-dimensional unitary representation or um, give rise to unitary representations. So this is where we'd start having to worry about the complex boundary conditions and we'd have to just modify slightly our how we wrote the ABK rules to make sure everything's still modern variant. But I, I don't want to go down that path at the moment. We'll we'll come to that in maybe a couple of weeks or a couple of lectures. Um, and then if you wanted to get, I'm not going to write this, but if you then wanted to get, um, maybe, maybe I will write it. Um, I'll write it. So I will mention this because it takes you towards really, really close to the, the closest we really get to uh, the standard model is if we had standard line models. So the standard line model has gauge group SU3 plus SU2 plus U1. So it's the standard model, and then just one X for U1. And um, in the free fermionic, how you would get this is like if you um, essentially compose these two, if you take both of these, you add a vector that does this and a vector that does this, um, then you would you would split up the SU5 into an SU2 and an, S and an SU3. Um, so let's say this, let's call this beta. So then it would be like add alpha and beta. Or it, or it would be like adding um, Right. Um, yeah, I think it's right. And then um, I mean, you could also think of it as like having a vector like this. Um, but that doesn't quite work. That would give you the uh, what's called the left-right symmetric. But um, where, so the left-right symmetric, you get an SU3, then it, this would actually be an SO4, which is SU2 cross SU2. So be two SU twos a bit like here, but yeah, this is just a very brief overview. Obviously, each of these spaces has a lot of physics. You'd have to go through and we'd analyze the representations and and um, to analyze the particle content and see how it how it works. But all I wanted to just point out is, is yeah, if you're adding extra vectors, you'd want to split the boundary conditions of the side bars. Um, like this, or like this, um, or like this, and these these are sort of nice ways to break the SO10 to a group very close to the standard model. And in particular, this case where you you have to use two breaking vectors would be the best. Would be really close to the standard model. This is where you really, um, if you wanted to do very very close particle physics and um, particle phenomenology, you could try and use models with with this standard like group. Okay. Um, Sorry, do these models still have a supersymmetry? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, so the, the supersymmetry will depend on the GSO phases. So you'd have some GSO phases um, from the additional vectors. So let's say you, if you wanted to keep the uh, n equals one, for example. So if you wanted n equals one to, to be maintained, you'd have um, this GFO phase, which would kind of be the key. And generally, it would be fixing it as minus one, would actually keep the gravity, group the gravity no. So. And if you had alpha and beta, you'd obviously have the same kind of thing. Um, this is assuming, I guess, that the beta and alpha, 
Well, it doesn't matter, but you, you fix you fix these to preserve the gravity, you know, in the GSF projections, that would be how you check if they're still supersymmetry. Okay. So that's the third thing going beyond Nahi. But I'm not going to, at the moment, we're going to stick with models with SO10 and 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 then extend the Nahi set in other ways. So um the next thing I'm going to add, add is, um, um, well, I'll just say add a vector x, um, which is, I mean, we had a vector like this when we did um, the 10 dimensional models, when we did the SO16 cross SO16 and E8 cross E8. But, um, so this vector, I'm going to call X now. I think before I called it like X I one. But um, this is. So I'm going to I'm going to put all of the like observable fermions. So the eight fermions that give you the the rank eight uh, observable sector into a vector called X. So um, if you just think for a second, what is this? If I add this to the Nahi set, can you try and imagine, try and have a think about what it would change about the model? So, so, with, the, so with the Nahi set, you obviously we talked about the gauge group and the representations. Like if you add in X, it's going to give rise to new sectors. It's going to have a new JSO projection. It's going to potentially split the gauge group. So you, you'd obviously have to write and think about it for a bit. And I'm not. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not sure how how many how many details I can go through now. But um, I'll kind of try and if you did it, you'd, I'll try and give you what highlights you'll find. So this could be maybe like a homework to sort of calculate things yourself and check. So think about yeah, what what sec what does this sector give you? What does the composition of the Nahi sectors with this give you? What does the gauge group become and stuff like that? So that could be like the next step on top of the questions about the Nahi set I gave you to do. Um, so one thing is it's gonna think about it, it's gonna split the you remember before we had SO six. You? Yeah. And that was from the Y and W bars with the eta bar one, two, and three. But this is now going to split the eters off. So they're going to actually, the eters are going to be three on their own, a single complex fermion on its own, with no other fermions with the same boundary conditions. Because before these three were grouped with some of the Ys and Ws. But now they're just single fermion. And a single complex fermion gives rise to what gauge group? So have one complex fermion. U1. U1, yeah. So this is going to split. So you're just going to get U1 from the eta bars. And then you're going to get S04 from the sort of three groups of um, two. Y bars and W bars. So there's going to be uh, Y bar three, four, five, six. Um, y bar one, two, W bar five, six. W bar one, two, three, four. And then this is just from the bar one, one, two, five. Okay. That's one thing it's going to do. So then you're still going to get um, an SO10 because the sidebars are still grouped. Like these still have the same boundary conditions in all basis vectors. So they're still grouped as an SO10. And then you've still got your hidden group. Nothing's changed with the hidden group. It's still SO16. Um, okay, so one thing is what what's the um, what type of sector does this give X? What what what's the, the mass on each side? 
or like what's um alpha on the holomorphic and alpha on the alpha anti holomorphic, or let's say x. Zero and zero, okay. Yeah, zero, eight. So therefore, this is already massless on this side. And then on the holomorphic side, you're going to need an, an oscillator to make it massless. NH, some holomorphic oscillator equal to a half. Can't see that on the recording, but. And h equal to a half. Um, so you're going to get a sector that looks like this. Um, there are the eight Ramon fermions for the sidebars and eaters. But then you're going to get an oscillator, some holomorphic oscillator. Um, so let's just call that like lambda. So it's a holomorphic oscillator that's never Schwartz boundary conditions in the in X, which is just all of them because they're all never Schwartz. Um, and so, what do you notice about this? So, so which oscillator? Um, how do I ask this question? Um, <laughs> so. Um, um, we, we, there's one there's one choice of this oscillator that's going to give you something that's um, important physics. Um, is it the two of these spin up or emergency representation or something like that? Um, well, so so uh, so one thing. So what what was the first holomorphic fermion? Uh, Sign you, yeah. So the first thing this could be is sine mu. So what type of state does that give? What type of states does that give? So what what what's is significant about this as a state? So what type of like uh, representations does this give? What type of particles do we get? So remember, this is the same as happened in SO10 models. Remember, you had the same thing instead of x, you had x psi one or x psi two. And what did that sector give you? So it's the difference between the SO16 and cross SO16 and E8 cross E8. You remember when we, we, we talked about yeah how you sometimes get SO16 cross SO16 and sometimes you get E8 cross E8. And it was because of exactly these states. Because whether or not these states are in the spectrum is gonna so this is a sign mu, so it's a space-time index, so it's a vector in space-time. And it's well, so it's a spin one. So it's a gauge boson. Okay. And it's a so it's a it's going to be a gauge boson, and they're going to be so if if we just had one like we could imagine if we just had a model like um. So let's, instead of having Nahi, we could just go back and talk about having one S and X. So if you had one S and X, uh, what would happen is the X um, gauge bosons um, Let's write it. So I think I have introduced, I have used this. Are you, are you comfortable with this sign notation? So this is just, A tor is just the same as writing this. It's all the combinations of plus and minus. 
Um, but then um, when I do the projections with one and S, that's going to fix it to either eight odd or eight, eight even. And these are precisely the two to the seven, which is the one to eight. Spinner dimension. So these are gauge bosons in the one the, yeah, that the, um, the enhance that enhance your group. So if you have just SO16, the gauge bosons from the NSX give you a 120. And then if you have these gauge bosons, you enhance it. So it's 120 plus 128, which is 248, which is the size of E8, fundamental E8, um, or well, the adjoint of E8. So this uh, enhances um, SO16 to E8. So, because if you just have one S and X, you've got um, psi bar one to the five and meter bar one to three. So you have SO16. But in the Nahi set, obviously you have, you don't have an SO16 because you've already broken it to SO10 cross whatever. So what actually happens in, um, in the Nahi set um, is, so I'll just write it here, so these, these gauge bosons, so psi mu x, so these, these gauge bosons um, enhance uh, gauge group. Remember, enhance is like saying when you have gauge bosons that aren't from the NS sector, so you're giving bigger gauge group. And so sometimes these will be in, and sometimes they won't be, depending on the GSA projections. Whereas the NS sector is always in, you always have those get it's more model independent. The NS sector is always always uh, remains, which is what you want really. But yeah, so that so these gauge bosons, uh, depending on GSF projections, will enhance um, the the gauge group associated to the psi bar one to five and the eta bars. So for Nahi, it's FO10 cross. And because we've got the um, we've got this x splitting off the eta bars, we now have SO10 cross U1 cubed. And the enhancement that that, you know, because now we've got these gauge bosons. So instead of an A to all, what you'd actually have is, you know, write that here. So what once you do the once you do the GSO projections, what you're going to get is these five are going to be joined together. So it's going to be something like this: five odd or even for the side bars, and then the eta bars are going to be like one, either plus or minus, and then one. So that's going to be like the the dimension of the spinners um, in in the Nahi set from with X. So this is going to be either odd or even. This is going to be uh, either well zero or one, depending on the GSO projections. But it doesn't change the basic, you know, um, um, groupings. So it's still, so the five even or odd, that's gonna be a two to the four, that's 16. And then these are just one, one, one. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if you do the group theory, what you get is actually um, what's, what, 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 what this forms is it gives you an enhancement to E6. To an exceptional group of six dimensions rather than the E8, which is a slightly smaller um, group than E8, but a bigger group then. It has the same rank, 
So whenever you have like something like an enhancement, you always check they have the same rank. Um, but I've, I've kept promising you that at some point I might do an electron group theory, but I keep postponing it because I'd have to actually read some old notes and stuff. But this is how it works out. So the if you have this x um, vector and it's not projected by the GSOs, then your the gauge group's actually going to be E6. You've still got this SO4 cubed. So the full um, gauge group is um, so you've got the Nahi with F. The gauge group is actually SO4 cubed cross E6 from the hidden group F the 16. And then um yeah, and then um and now what was called the spinner, so the 16 of SO10, you know, as a representation E6 is actually not, it's only part of the full representation because it, it's now enhanced in this bigger group. So you also have some of the um, components, which I'll talk about now. Um, because, so there's the, the other components to, to realize a full representation of E6, You've got the B1, B2, and B3, which will be a 16 spinner. Then they also have some other sectors of the representations joined together. And these are going to be from um, so you do some important sectors now with the B1, 2, and 3 plus X. Um, so what would these sectors look like? Just if you think about it for a second. So let's take B1 plus X. So B1 plus X would be, well, it'd be the same on the holomorphic side because it's X doesn't have any holomorphic fermions. So you've got sine mu, eta bar, um, I, one, two, Y, three, four, five, six. Um, so it's the same, and then you've still got y bar three, four, five, six. But then the the the, the fermions here that were periodic are now aperiodic, and they swap. So instead of having psi bar one to five and eta bar one periodic, you have just eta bar one and uh, two and three. So what's the mass level of this? Or what's the the bare vacuum risk? So what would what would the the dots on the holomorphic and a holomorph anti-holomorphic side? Yeah, so four, one, two, three, four. So you've got um it's massless on the Holomorphic, it's already massless. But then on the anti-holomorphic, it's also four, yeah, one, two, three, four. So you've got, yeah, you need a half, yeah. So we need one oscillator that's never Schwartz boundary conditions within that set from the anti-holomorphic. So what type of states does that give us? Um, so it gives us, you know, there are there are quite a few choices for this oscillator. You know, you could have the five bars, you know, the hidden fermions, 
and some of the Y's and W's, like the Y's and W's here that aren't, um, that are never short boundary conditions. So the other ones, and this, because these are periodic, so they don't give us a half. And the other ones, you know, we could also use the sidebar and the eta bar one, because they're aperiodic. But um, the key, the kind of key um, states for the physics, so uh, sort of um, key um, states you get from here is like if you have, it, it, it's always going to be about the observable sector, right? It's, it's to do with the echo 10 part, because the other parts, the hidden part, we don't really care, it's hidden. Um, but for the physics, we just want the gut, the gut stuff. The, the things that give rise to representations of the gut, because that's going to be our physics. So the key states are going to be when the oscillator, so if the oscillator is, is um, these phi bar, and it could be the complex conjugates. Um, and then the, let's just say bi, because I, I did it here for b1, but let's, we have it for the other ones as well. So bi, so what b1, 2, 3. Okay. And um, um, what do you get? So these these um, oscillators they they group together into a single vector representation. And what the representation they give you is the what's called the vectorial tense. Vectorial ten of Echo pen. So mighty mighty. Vectorial terms. Pen of echo pen. Um, and basically what that is is like that you've you've really got ten oscillators here. Because you've got five and then the complex conjugates. So the counting is just as simple as the counting the number of oscillators that you have. And then the dimension of the spinner is like the dimension of each single choice of oscillator. Each oscillator has um, a vector which is going to be like so on this side, the, the, the anti holomorphic part is just these two and these two. So you'd have like um a like a plus 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 minus um yeah. so this is from y so for b what for b1 again this is like y bar three four y bar five six then your ether two ether bar three Okay, um, but the main part is that this the counting of the vector will be the from the oscillators, and there are 10 oscillators, so there's a dimension 10. And the vectorial 10 of us, so 10 is, is going to be interesting for physics because I'll just tell you that this um, um, can be used. Um, um as as um representation containing the higgs because we know from the standard model we have all of the particles that we talked about before the leptons uh, the electron quarks, etc. Um, yeah, the quarks and leptons, they all fit into the 16. But then there's obviously this very important state um, particle in the standard model, which is a vector, and then we'll relates to representations, pigs, 
Um, so you need you can't just you, you can't just use the 16 to give you all of the particles. You also need some some other type of representation. So for the from SO10 gut build in model model building, you need you need to put the Higgs in. And you, you, you use the vectorial 10 for that. But we'll see there's some subtleties here because it's as you go break the SO10, you might lose, you might not be able to keep the the, the right representation for the Higgs. Because the Higgs remember is the one that breaks the ethnic two right. Uh, right. Or it would be no sorry, the S and two uh, uh, S and two that. Um, so you need to be the right um, size. So it's obviously like a sub, you know, a sub um, a branch, a branch of this representation. Do you have to go soon? I guess. Do you have to go soon? Okay. Um, should I go on for five minutes or is that okay? Um, so, because I just want to maybe round things up a bit, because I think I've got the main, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to point out with the X. Okay. So I'll just summarize what we found. So one F, B1, B2, B3, F. Um, so what did the X do? Um, so what's the first thing I said? It breaks the gauge group, or give, let's just say it gives you the gauge group um, SO4 cubed plus E6 plus E1 cubed. Plus FO sixteen. So, uh, so one thing is is that it it it's sort of it turns out it's quite useful to have. So it's quite good, really, that we've split off these U ones. Sort of physics motivation here as well, which I I think I I, I won't go into, but um yeah. So the so given that gauge group. Um, we can get so this this e, e6 was from the x enhancement. Okay. Um, then what else did I say? That the um reflective so the b1, 2, and 3 at with x give. I mean one of the one of the set of states they give, not it's not the whole. You know, this is just one of the choices of the, the oscillators where you're using psi bar one to five. But these can give a vectorial 10 of SO10. Um, and and then um, so what, what actually happens now is is what I was gonna say is um about the e6 so e6 um so the, the relevant sort of representation for e6 which contains all of the particles and the particle generations is actually a so the e6 rep is a 27 a 27 dimensional thing which is kind of equal to, so if you broke the E6 back down to the SO10 plus U1 cubed, that would be like, what you've got in here is the 16, which is from the B1, 2, and 3. Then you've got the 10, which is from the B1, 2, 3 plus X. And then there's also a kind of um, singlet, which is just kind of, when, is a kind of I think it's like the diagonal part of something, but um, but this 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 is what the counting gives you. So this would be from like the one, two, three, the spinorials. This is from the um, C one, two, three plus X vectorial. So spin that, and then this is like singular, but it doesn't matter so much now. 
Okay. And um, so one thing is, is um, uh, I don't know, it depends how long I want to go on. But the um, well, we still have the one problem we still have here is that we still have lots of generations. Like we had 48 generations for Nahi. Now we've kind of got these E6 representations with all the particles in them. But we've still got quite more than three. We've still got, we want three generations ultimately. But here we've still got lots of copies of each one of these. So from each B1, 2, and 3, we've still got multiple copies of this this sort of representation of each generation. So um, as we break the SO10 down, we want to get rid of some of them and only keep in the N3. Um, but, um, so one way to think about doing that is what I was going to mention next. So it depends when you want to go, if you want me to stop now. Well, what time do you do? You... Yeah, that's fine. We can we can pick up next time. But um, but yeah. So I'll talk about that next time, breaking the generations, and um, see where we get to, and then start doing the classification. So, okay. See you next time.